Good afternoon. It's 1.30. Oh. Get ready to go back into open session. And before we say the pledge, just let everyone that knew in here hadn't been to a board meeting, it's being taped. So if you'd like to go back home and bring it up, you'll be able to watch yourself. So this time we have a young youngster who's going to lead us in the pledge. I proudly just to the flag and I'm not a sister of the rest of the world. So it just is one nation and other God and the world of liberty for justice for all. Emery, that was quite impressive for a three-year-old. Am I right? Emery? You're four. I'm sorry. So you're four years old. Okay. Right. So. Emery. Emery. Could, Emery. Could you come up to the microphone and introduce your mom and your other guests who are with you today? I think so. You think so? <laughs> Who's with you? I am Anna Thomas. It's Eiler. Okay, Miss Eiler. And? Mommy. Mommy. <laughs> well, you did a wonderful job, Emery. Emery's Guess what? What? I have a lot of cars. A lot of cars. That's great. Well, I have something for you. Can you shake my hand? Let me give me your other hand. Are you really like that microphone? Don't you? <laughs> I wanted to take it off and do it. Oh, you did. Well, we're all done with that now. But this is for you. Okay. This is a certificate for you. What does that say? I'm E-M-O-R-I-S-T-E-P-A-G-A-S. Right. Emery Stevens. Emery is in our pre-K program. Yeah. Pre-K three. Pre-K three. That's where I got the three-year-olds. Yes. Okay. Emery. So this is for you. Okay. Now you have your own flag. That's why we do what we do. Three point two on the agenda. Approve, approve of our agenda. Entertain a motion. I got a motion. Second. Got a motion to second in the discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 3.3. .3. Dr. Hamlin, I will turn that over to you for reorganization. All right. The Board of Education will now accept nominations for the position of chairman of the Wicomico County Board of Education. Mr. Fitzgerald has been nominated as chairman. I'll second that. Second, yep. Yeah. Are there any other nominations? All in favor of Mr. Fitzgerald, please raise your hand. Congratulations, Mr. Fitzgerald. Chairman Fitzgerald. Would you like for me to continue with the vice chair? Yes, please. Okay. All right. <laughs> so the Board of Education will now accept nominations for the position of vice chairman of the Wicomico County Board of Education. 
I would like to nominate Mr. Gene Malone as Vice Chairman. I second. Mr. Malone has been nominated as the Vice Chairman. Are there any other nominations? All in favor of Mr. Malone, please raise your hand. Once again, a unanimous decision. Congratulations. Thank you. Vice Chair Malone, congratulations to both of you. I will turn the meeting back over to you, Chairman. Thank you. Before we move on to 3.4, I just want to thank my colleagues, the community, for me being able to set up here and do what I do. We'll, we'll hear from the students from all of our high schools here shortly. But the youngster are pre-K. This is why we want pre-K. If that's not awesome, nothing that we do is. So again, before I move on, I want to thank everybody. Now, 3.4, moment of silence. Uh, I know as we sit here to, this afternoon, there, Herb Roynton's service is going on. Herb, retired plumbing instructor, instructor and substitute teacher, Botech Center. Caleb Chapman, second grader, student, Prince Street Elementary. Frank Donaldson, Jr., custodian, Delmar Elementary. And Heather Rutterberger, music teacher, East Salisbury Elementary and Wine Middle. It seems like every month we, we lose a lot of our family. Some of them hit real close to home. At this time, please in your own way, I'd like to have a moment of silence. <coughs> Thank you. Three point five <coughs> recognition. And Dr. Allen, you have it, but it's recognizing uh, Bill Turner, one of our past board members. So I will read this tribute to um, William Turner, who was unable to be with us this afternoon, recognizing his service as a board <coughs> member. Whereas Mr. William K. Turner has served Wicomico County Public Schools faithfully and loyally as a member of the Board of Education from September 2017 to December 2018, and whereas Mr. Turner has consistently supported the mission of the school system to provide all students an educational foundation and a set of skills which will enable them to become responsible and productive citizens in our society, and whereas he has taken his responsibilities as a board member seriously by encouraging family and community engagement in public education as evidenced by giving support to and participating in various activities of the Wicomico County school system, and whereas Mr. Turner has served as a member of the Audit and Budget Committee the Policy Review Committee, and the he School Health Council, and has participated in the various activities of the Maryland Association of Boards of Education, and whereas he has, with his business and financial background, helped to guide the board's financial direction, decision-making, and policy-setting processes, and has consistently supported the commitment of the school system to ensure a safe and productive learning environment for all students and staff, by advocating for safe school initiatives and has regularly supported our efforts to partner with business, family, and faith communities. And whereas Mr. Turner has been instrumental in providing support for Imagine 2022, including vision points for the future, kindergarten readiness, an increased graduation rate, and a high-performing workforce, and has supported instructional programs, including early childhood education, the first middle school signature program, visual and performing arts, career and technology education, extracurricular programs including athletics, destination imagination, and other after school and summer school opportunities, and has embraced the work associated with the Maryland College and Career Readiness Standards 
and the evolution of the Every Student Succeeds Act accountability model. And whereas he has strongly advocated support for adequate funding for public education and capital projects locally and throughout the state of Maryland, and with his expertise has worked to improve communications between the board and local officials for the betterment of the school system and the community at large, and whereas Mr. Turner has been a key decision maker in plans for renovating and replacing numerous school facilities to continue to improve the quality of the instructional setting in Wicomico County Public Schools, including Parkside High School, Wicomico Middle School, East Salisbury Elementary, West Salisbury Elementary, Bennett Middle, Del Mar Elementary, Beaver Run Elementary and Choices Academy and has supported the balancing of enrollment across middle schools to provide equal opportunities for all students. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education of Wicomico County expresses its gratitude to Mr. William K. Turner for his dedicated service as a board member since September 2017 to the students, families, and staff of Wicomico County Public Schools, and be it further resolved that the Board of Education of Wicomico County publicly recognizes Mr. Turner's contributions to local education and to the Maryland Association of Boards of Education, and be it further resolved that a copy of this tribute will be presented to Mr. William K. Turner and a copy be spread upon the minutes of the Wicomico Board of, Edu the Board of Education of Wicomico County this 11th day of December, 2018. Thank you for your service, Mr. Turner. Yes, and <clears throat> this tribute will be uh, present, framed and presented to him at a later date. Three point six, recognition of students for signing the 2018 holiday cards, and we have um, Madison Wineski, um, James M. Bennett, eleventh grade. She here. Madison. Sinovic, are you here? Yeah, come on down. And Who else is here? I think or we just have two. Is um, Mary Jo McCarthy here? Come on down, Mary Jo. And the other two students who are being recognized, do you want to? Sierra Hickson of Parkside, who's R.A. Gil Levi, why? I don't believe either of those two students are with us today. So we will recognize Mary Jo and Madison their designs and give you copies of your own Christmas cards. <laughs> <laughs> Madison. And Madison's design is in the upper left, correct? Thank you, Madison. Madison is a senior from Bennett High School. Junior. 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 Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we just promoted you. <laughs> Get that in writing. <laughs> Middle and High School, and Mary Jo's design is in the upper right-hand corner. So thank you very much for sharing your talent with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. I am too, because I don't have that. I am too, because I don't have that. I'm very creative. Ready? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It would be something with mine. <laughs> yeah. So I also want to just give um, the audience or those who are viewing a bit, little bit of an idea of what went into the selection of the holiday cards. It's actually a very difficult decision to make. Um, each of our teachers at our all four high schools um, encourage students to design the Christmas cards and then entries are submitted to my office and uh, Dr. Bear, our supervisor of fine arts, who's in the back, and Mrs. Saylor, do I see Tracy? Yeah, Tracy is away. here. Uh, Tracy's our public information officer, work with me and spread them all out on my desk and I have the very, very difficult decision of selecting those that I think represent our school system and um, are a good uh, mix across all four schools. So again, congratulations ladies, nice job. Three point seven. Uh, 
Okay, keep me straight. Um, no, you keep me straight. <laughs> uh, student reps, which is always the yeah. highlight of this meeting. Uh, at the board table today, filling in at Y-High is Jessica Green. What's going on at Y-High? I think we had a big thing at the gymnasium the other night, didn't we? Yes. <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jessica Green, and I'm representing the Y-High student government as senior class president. Though we're excited for the upcoming holiday break, Y High has worked hard both in and outside the classroom. First, our winter sports <coughs> has been off to a great start. Last Thursday, both of our varsity ba basketball teams earned well-deserved wins over Cambridge South Dorchester. At the varsity boys basketball game, Coach Butch Waller was recognized for his amazing career with the renaming of the court in his honor. We are lucky to have him as a dedicated coach for our basketball team. Our teams will face Crisfield today, and we know our Y High tribe is excited to support our teams. On to wrestling. Though our team lost, three varsity wrestlers won in their opening match of the season. Last but not least, our boys' 4x400 meter relay team placed first, setting a state record, and junior Neil Patterson ra ran the fastest time in the state for the 300 meter dash. The girls' track team came in 11th place at their first meet last Wednesday. We wish all sports teams the best of luck this season. And we also continue to recognize our fall sports athletes. Some of our football players made the all-star teams. And six players won the Bayside team and five participated in the Eastern Shore Bowl. 23 players even earned at least a 3.25 GPA. Isaiah David and Matthew Lowe played in the senior soccer game too. Moving on from sports, JROTC was awarded the best marching group at the Salisbury Christmas Parade. Our marching band and cheer team also participated with great spirit. Our band director, Mr. Pages, even dressed as the Grinch. Our students have also worked hard academically. PBIS recognized about 60 students for positive referrals with a fun hot chocolate bar. Our incentive with an exciting game show theme was also attended by 491 students with a 2.1 GPA and without a single referral. Wahai High seniors continue to apply and be accepted to various colleges. All 31 students who applied to Salisbury University for on-site admissions were accepted, and 17 students were accepted to UMES, and some even earned place in the Honors College. Seniors are still working hard to complete applications aided by teachers and guidance counselors before those January 1st deadlines. Our various honor societies and clubs have been keeping themselves busy over the next few weeks. Our Spanish Honor Society recently inducted 11 new members and plans to volunteer over the break at the Salvation Army Angel Tree Operation with our National Honor Society, who will volunteer at the Holly Center too. Recently, our National Honor Society helped at the Holly Center's Operation Teddy Bear. Today, our student government is hosting a blood drive with over 50 donors. We are proud of each society for their commitment to helping various community organizations. To get into the holiday spirit, we will also have many events prepared for the upcoming weeks. On Thursday, our band and choir will put on a combined holiday concert featuring many different selections. Students and staff will compete in an annual door decorating contest on the 14th with the theme of Spirit of the Winter Day Holi Holiday. We cannot wait to see what our tribe comes up with. Finally, at Y High, we are looking forward to finishing strong in and out of the classroom before our winter holiday, <coughs> and as a recipe representative of our student government we're excited to share with what we accomplished next month thank you thank you very good from Mardella High School Deanna State how are you doing good how are you good okay all right so I have a lot to talk about starting with our band so our band's been very busy these past few weeks. We headed to Pocomoke for the Christmas parade on <coughs> 26, and we returned as grand champions. Oh, is it a light switch? Oh, <laughs> Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, do you want me to restart? Sure. Okay, so our band has been busy these past few weeks. We headed to Pocomoke for the Christmas parade on the 26th and returned as grand champions. 
We had an even, an even better outcome with the Cambridge Parade, receiving the titles of Best Band Front, Best Percussion, First Place Band, and Best Overall. The trophy was pretty tall. People like to joke that it was taller than I was. <laughs> the middle school bands had their <coughs> holiday concert last week, and the high school band is looking forward to their holiday concert next week. The... The high school band students, about seven of us, traveled to Towson last weekend to take part of the Towson Honor Band. We auditioned that morning and spent the day being conducted by guest conductors for a, um, a performance at the end of the day. And the high school band students have started performing in their Christmas ensembles out in the community. We've had about three groups perform at various nursing homes so far, and the rest of them will perform throughout the month of December. And... Lastly, seniors Mitchell Adams and Hunter Wirt have auditioned and made the Maryland All-State Band. And Hunter Wirt also qualified for the All-Eastern Honors Orchestra, which kind of combines the best players up and down the East Coast and in parts of Europe. And for that to happen, he had to have made um, All-State for, I believe, two years in a row, which is really hard to do. <laughs> and speaking of All-State, senior Zoe Bradshaw made the All-State Choir. And then moving on to sports, the wrestling team did very well on their first meet with four of its members placing top five in their weight class, two of which are first-time wrestlers. The track team had its first meet last Wednesday and look forward to building on that tomorrow at the meet. The boys' basketball team had their first home game last week where the Mardella's first step team performed for the first time. And the girls' team has their first homecoming, or not homecoming game, <laughs> has their first home game this afternoon at four. Next, our Spanish Honor Society had the holiday dinner last night, which basically we all picked dishes from various Latin American countries and made them and then presented them to each other and tried them out. And it was pretty fun. I had a good time. A lot of the foods were very different than what I'm used to, but they were pretty good. I made tres leche, which is kind of a cake that's like soaked in milk. So that was like one of my favorites because it's cake. <laughs> and <then laughs> But um, we tried gallo pinto and various other things. And also, our Red Cross Club is doing very well. They donated $380 to veterans from the veteran dinner that they hosted last month. And in preparation for prom season, which is coming up rather quickly, our junior class picked our prom theme, which is going to be The Great Gatsby this year. But it's a secret for the seniors, because at Mardella, the juniors throw their prom for the seniors. So if you know any, don't tell them. And the SGA planned this year's Holiday Spirit Week, which will take place next week. We're having a pajama day, an ugly sweater day, a green and red day, and a Santa's workshop day where you can dress up as an elf or a reindeer or something fun like that. We're also delivering holiday, Her holiday Hersheyograms. So it's kind of like you can um, send Hershey kisses to somebody that you want with like a note. And then um, last Friday, we had an event called Parents Night Out, where basically it gave parents a chance to go out, and we babysat the kids. And it was the first time we had it. We're going to have another one in February, and it was a pretty big hit. All the kids enjoyed the crafts, the cookie decorating, the movie, and, of course, the pizza. And we look forward to telling you guys what we do throughout the month of December and in January going into the new year. Well, thank you. From Parkside High School, Sarah and Ashley, who's going to be first this month? Okay. Ashley's going to be first. I'm going to be first. Okay. Good afternoon and happy holidays, members of the board. At Parkside, we are currently embracing the winter cheer, and thank you for the fog delay. In the, <laughs> in the past month, a lot has happened. Our foreign language department was a winter was a winner of the costume contest, and they donated money to the cause of their choosing, which was bless our children. Where they dressed up as our favorite Barbies. The winter sports season has begun, and the Ram Fam is going strong. Senior Michael Daughtery already won his 100th win in wrestling, and we are extremely proud of him. Indoor track had the first meet last week, and both basketball teams already won. Also, our unified is already practicing, and we're trying to be state champs again. In other news, Fellowship for Christian Athletes last week participated in Santa's Angels. They were given $700 to give 13 unfortunate local children and their families supplies they need. 
Each club and organization in the school also decorated a tree for the holiday season to be auctioned off, and the money will go to a family in need. Last week, our orchestra also had their holiday concert, where they played their trademark piece, Charlie Brown. Soon our school will participate in an ugly sweater contest, and any student or teacher can participate in the event. CTE's Horticulture A-plus Garden Center is selling honey, pansies, and poinsettias, and they are absolutely beautiful. Skills USA is also holding a canned food drive this year. Next Tuesday on December 18th at 7 p.m., there is a band and choir concert, and the admission is the low, low cost of a canned good. After break returns, four Parkside students are going to be lead roles in VPA Performance Theater and Y High's Drama Club production of Clue on Stage, which will be at the Y High Auditorium January 10th and 11th. And I'm Miss Scarlett, so you guys should come see it. <laughs> Parkside received some good news. Parkside got three stars and were only a few points away from a four. While we ranked three, we truly believe we, that we deserve a ten, and that's due to our great teachers in school. With the P.E. locker room about to be closed and the re-renovations of the new auditorium seats once again, we would like to thank all of you guys for what you have done in helping our school. The Christmas parade was a huge success this year. This year's Teacher of the Year was featured in it, Ms. McKinnon, in her brand new car. We would also like to thank Mr. Ben Davis for all that he has done for our school and not only Bennett but Parkside. Just in case you guys didn't know, Mr. Davis let us borrow multiple programs that he, is, that he only intended for his own school's use. We used his programs for our homecoming court elections, student elections, and even helped us get our TV studio up and running again. So thank you for helping out our school as much as possible, and our whole Ram fam appreciates it. Once again, we would like to thank you guys for your time, and Parkside wishes you a happy holiday. Thank you. And from James M. Bennett, the young man with the multiple colored tie. Juan, how are you? Yes. Hello, everyone. You? So before I tell you guys about all the amazing things happening at Bennett, I wanted to t thank Dr. Mr. Palmer for this incredible tie, and I extremely appreciate it. And don't worry, next time I'll know all the characters on there. I promise. <laughs> yep. So I wanted to start us off with uh, Bennett scoring a th a three points out of five on ESSA. We're extremely proud of all of our staff for the amount of work that they put in and making sure that every student deserves and gets the education. And we're really working on improving that rating and hoping that next year it'll be even higher. <laughs> next thing. My AP computer science teacher, my student government advisor, and the person I go to for advice whenever life puts me in a pickle, Mr. Benjamin Arthur Davis has won the Extra Mile Award for December. Not only our staff, but our students are extremely proud and appreciative of all the work that he puts in into what he does. Is he here yet? Oh, not yet, but he'll be here soon, hopefully. But um, next, Brian and Patrick Severaj, they're both brothers, have placed second and third in the UMES Mid-Atlantic Math Competition. Now they're brothers, so of course they're making sure that at least one of them wins next year and places first place. Next thing, we're having our winter movie night this Friday. So the thing about the winter movie night is that it's not just an event for James and Bennett. It's for every high school student in the county. And we're making sure that students have the opportunity to engage before the winter break. So this way, more schools can just engage and connect more. And we're also making sure that our different clubs and organizations at Bennett deserve, uh, get the opportunity to fundraise for their clubs. So we're allowing them to sell baked goods and cookies and whatever they want. So we're really happy about that. Our Lear Club, as I mentioned already, is taking a field uh, last time. I mentioned last time is taking a field trip down the Arlington Cemetery, where we'll be putting wreaths on the ones that passed away. Now, this event is something that I'm looking really forward to, and I'm really appreciative of the amount of work that Mr. and Mrs. Lincoln put into all the field trips and all the activities we do for Leo Club. So, thank you for that, Mr. Bob Lane. <laughs> Next, uh, our art club is hosting a Bob Ross art a paint night where we're showcasing the brilliant and incredible art pieces that our students create. And lastly, to end it all off, our holiday spirit week is next week. On Monday, we'll be having holiday pajama day. On Tuesday, we'll be having flannels and fuzzy socks day. 
On Wednesday, we'll, we'll be having colors for different classes. And on Friday, to top it all off, we'll be having u- an ugly sweater day. So if you're coming to Bennett next week, make sure you got the right attire on. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Three point eight on the agenda. Public comments. I don't have any in front of me. We do not have any public comment. Three point nine. Superintendent's report. Dr. Hanlon. Okay, we are going to start my report. I'm going to ask Dr. Briggs to give you an update. Um, I think most everyone, I know at least the board is aware of our SS star ratings, but they came out on December the 4th since our last board meeting. We're very pleased with our results, as a couple of the students have mentioned already. But Dr. Briggs, if you will just give us a quick overview, please. You got it. Um, first off, just want to update everybody on the school's ratings that Ashley and Rachman referenced. Um, they became official at the state board meeting last uh, Tuesday. So I don't, we're not going to go into all the details that we did previously, but I just wanted to remind everybody about how those star rankings are calculated. Um, if you look on the left-hand column, it shows where 65% um, of the total measures are um, academic measures um, and the various components that go into that. And in the right-hand column, the other 35% um, references specifically school quality and student successes. <laughs> And there are our school rankings um, that went out, um, that were published by the state. Um, I want to point out that prior to the official release um, last Tuesday, um, myself and other central office staff met with each principal to share their school's rating. Um, And we began the process of drilling down into their specific data to identify areas where they're doing well, um, as well as identifying opportunities for growth. Um, Principals are now continuing that process by working with instructional leadership teams and their entire school communities in order to improve their ratings for next year. Um, And not to leave anybody out, but the wonderful principal from uh, Pemberton Elementary is with us this morning, and um, Pemberton was one of our um, highest rated four-star schools, so kudos to Ms. Eiler and the entire awesome staff at Pemberton. Good. (laughs) I saw some pictures of the celebration. It was good. And I also just want to highlight quickly a reminder that the primary schools, um, they do not receive star ratings because um, uh, we don't start assessing those guys until third grade for the ELA and the math components of the accountability measures. So um, that's why those schools do not receive ratings. And that was about it, Dr. Hanna. Thank you very much. And I I just want to um, commend publicly Dr. Briggs and his staff for their um, diligence in really digging into the data that were provided by MSDE confidentially early on to really understand what these results mean and the conversations that are going on with our school administrators and then subsequently with teachers in schools about, okay, this is a great baseline, but where do we go from here? What are the areas where we really need to target specific improvements? So. We are in conversations, and I know school improvement plans are being perhaps redesigned to to address specific areas um, that are being measured by MSDE. So um, more to come on that. Um, Mrs. Walston, would you like to come down and introduce your Special Education Citizens Advisory uh, Group? Thank you very much, Mr. Fitzgerald and Dr. Hanlon and board members. It's a pleasure to be with you today. And uh, to say that we have a group, we have a singleton, (laughs) as uh, life has happened. Um, 
You know, this is how it goes. Uh, the co-chair, whose daughter is also a member of our Special Education Citizens Advisory Committee, had to have an emergency appendectomy last night. So she is a Mardella student, and we want to wish Emily Scott well in her recovery and, and thank uh, LaVon Atkins, her mom, for her leadership. But it is, and uh, Mrs. Uh, Dr. Ann Anderson, um, is unable to be with us because of a procedure. So I'm glad you've got, you're alive and ticking <laughs> and things are going well. This is Sarah Edwards, who is our co-chairman of the Wicomico County Special Education Citizens Advisory Committee. And she has yielded her outstanding leadership uh, skills to a, um, a, a committee that advises me and our leadership team in special education on what the needs are, where we need to go, and to try to request and receive information that helps them be an informed citizenry about students with disabilities, those with um, individualized programs as well as those with 504 accommodations plans. So I really am um, a non-voting member and uh, I try to take it all in and provide the information that they seek from our Board of Education so that they can more inform, be more informed and be able to make those recommendations. It is now required that there be an annual report to you, Dr. Hanlon, and to our board. So it's my pleasure to allow Sarah Edwards to present that to you, which has been distributed, I believe. Thank you. Yes, and uh, forgive me for having some notes to read from today, but trying to bring the three of us together in presenting our notes. So, dear Mr. Fitzgerald and Dr. Hanlon and ladies and gentlemen of the Wicomico County Board, it's with great pride and careful consideration that we submit our first annual report of the newly restructured Special, Ed, uh, Special Education Citizens Advisory Committee, and we'll refer to it as CCAC to keep it simple. In response to the parent input that we gathered through contact with the Special Education Department <coughs> and through doing parent surveys, um, Bonnie Walston, the Director of Special Education, initiated a change to reformat the, the CCAC and requested that the families of Wacomico County participate in revising um, to form a, tradi a traditional committee and update our bylaws, our officers, and our annual reports. So we formed an executive leadership team that was elected by the members of CCAC, and we worked closely with the director and staff to recommend topics for presentation at our four um, scheduled meetings throughout the year. And this is to serve the interests of the students that have special needs as well as the family members. Acting on input from the community from CCAC members, the executive leadership team utilized resources provided by the Special Education Department to host meetings focusing on the vital topics such as development and implementation of IEPs and 504s, and is working towards having those videos presented avail or pre available through our new website. Thank you, Dr. Paul Butler. Um, <clears throat> the CCAC members have been enthusiastic about the quality of the information being shared and during the scheduled CCAC meetings and are focusing on reaching a more broad audience through the use of the website and social media. So over the last year, there have been a lot of thoughtful and meaningful, um, re there was a thoughtful and meaningful reorganization of the CCAC to focus on the areas of specifically our bylaws and communication, the IDEA and 504 processes, procedures, and to explore ways to communicate more effectively and efficiently with families with the community as a whole to heighten awareness of services available through our school system, county agencies, and the state of Maryland. In addition to the topics that we previously addressed, CCAC members have had the benefit of discussions on the budget process, updates to the IEP and 504 structure, the state and federal legislative changes, IEP and 504 determinations, and X2 parent portal accessibility. With regard to the county budget for the Special Education Department, it is a shared belief among all of our CCAC members and participants uh, that the special education department accomplishes virtually the impossible. I mean, Bonnie just moves mountains. I mean, mm -hmm. she's <laughs> one of the most creative people I've ever, ever met. And so when we say, you know, that the funding is stretched to the limit, I mean, we, we, see, we see it. And so we are requesting your support through additional funding, particularly with regard to increased investment in human resources. Our county is in dire need of additional personnel to optimize the investment 
for uh, opportunities for all students to achieve their potential for development. I've seen that firsthand, you know, in my own daughter, and I'm extremely grateful for everything that Bonnie and her department have done and the board, so thank you. With teen suicide on the rise and concerns for better managing of issues of bullying and the ongoing issues of crisis management, the demand for mental health services is growing each day. So requesting that you please support the special education department through the increased funding as the budget process begins this January. In closing, each of us, and that would be LaVon, Ann, and myself, you know, have stories to share, success stories of our families who have had the benefit of strategies, accommodations, programs, services, love, and so much more mm -hmm. from the special education department. In the time that we have partnered with Mrs. Walston and her outstanding team, we have seen firsthand just how hardworking they are. They are. The experience and knowledge brought to the table by Mrs. Walston, Lynn Smoke, Holly Hatton, Patty Atkins, and Nicole Twilley is outstanding. They make every decision with a thought, how can I make this action better serve students and families as their guide? The entire crew is to present, the entire crew is present for the CCAC meetings, clearly demonstrating that students and their families are a top priority. Each member of the team is accessible and will go the extra mile in support of students. And this is a key component of student success. We are grateful for Bonnie and her team and the special education um, department and honored to partner with them to serve better the students and families of Wicombo County through CCAC. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, for your leadership and for representing your group. Thank you. Before you get up, uh, I want to share with the public, I got a phone call prior to this meeting from Ann Anderson. <laughs> I want Bonnie, nothing but great words for your department. So on the record, I want you to go back, even though they're not here with you today, and share with them how much they are supported in this community. And reading all of this, I already knew it. <laughs> but it's nice when somebody, an advisory group, comes and tells you we are doing something right. So we appreciate, but please take that back. And Anne, she's been working with you for about 17 years, she tells me. I didn't think she was that old, but anyhow. <laughs> but nothing but compliments, and she was sorry she couldn't be with you today. So thank you. Well, I certainly want to personally thank the board and Dr. Hamlin for that support. None of this happens in isolation, and we must we are a team in, in this approach, and it would not happen without your support of our budget and our request, and we thank you again for that every day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Butler, you're up with the Extra Mile Awards. Okay. We have a couple of uh, really special Extra Mile Awards today. Um, for the first time, we have one gentleman who is being awarded, and he was nominated by someone at a different school. And uh, that man is Mr. Ben Davis. He's a computer education teacher at James and Bennett High School. And uh, he was nominated by a teacher at uh, Parkside High School because of him coming over, helping the journalism department build their TV studio, help them outfit the TV studio. He trained them on the TV studio as well. And uh, just been a, a major help to them over at Parkside. Uh, he was nominated by Sherry Harkins, who is a French teacher at Parkside. But, of course, as I said before, he teaches at James and Bennett High School. And I uh, just want to say also that Mr. Ben Davis was very instrumental in helping us this past summer in putting up the new website that we have, wcboe.org. He was very instrumental in helping advising us on what we needed for that website. So the first Extra Mile Award goes to Mr. Ben Davis. I want him to come on down, Ben. This is for you. And we also have a certificate. And you'll stand right there. And Tracy's going to take your picture. <laughs> Thank you, Ben.
Our next uh, individual, his name is Oliver Royster. Um, he is custodian here at 101 Long Avenue. Now, the amazing thing about him is whenever you see him, he always greets you with a smile. Everybody he does. He says, hey, how are you doing today? He does that. The other thing he does is not only does he do, do his you know, normal daily duties, but he's out there you know, wiping fingerprints off glasses. He's cleaning out in the um, uh, parking lot and just does the extra things that you wouldn't think anybody would do. But he goes the extra mile every single day in helping keep not only this building clean, but keep it running uh, smoothly. In fact, I understand that he was also here by himself for quite a while because we had an employee out, so he had to work double duty. So I want, uh, want to congratulate the Extra Mile Award winner from right here at 101 Long Avenue, Mr. Oliver Royster. Come on down, sir. Congratulations, sir. Thank you, Mr. That is for you, and this is for you as well. And I'll get out of the way and let Tracy take that picture. Thank you very much. Courtney Jones with our uh, monthly grants report. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. During the month of October, we had 20 grants funded, totaling $892,679.24. <laughs> me. Um, the first grant that was funded was through the Maryland State Department of Education. It was actually year two of our Striving Readers Literacy Grant. The Maryland Business Roundtable for Education funded the Tribe After School Program for Wicomico High School. We had quite a few actually from the Community Foundation. Um, the first is for the Middle School One County One Book Program for all of our county high schools. The Donnie Williams Foundation for Clue on Stage um, through Mr. Jeff Baer for the central office and it's actually for all of our high schools to fund that program. Another from the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore for the Futsal Soccer League between East Salisbury and Prince Street Elementary Schools. The Nothing But Net program for Prince Street Elementary. We had year five funding um, approved for the Gear Up program through the State Department of Education, as well as the Tomb Nutrition Project Select for Mr. Eric Gosley. The Community Foundation funded a grant for the Salisbury Poetry, Re Poetry Week for Salisbury Middle School, the World, Drum Mu World Music Drumming at Bennett Middle, Environmental Arts Integration <coughs> at Westside Intermediate, Technology for the Classroom um, for our Teacher of the Year, Lisa McKinnon at Parkside, a pre-K kindergarten embroidery residency at Willards Elementary, the college application workshop and visit for students at Wicomico High School, the Salisbury Community Project at Choices Academy with Ms. Paige McSorley. We were also funded through the State Department of Education for the Education of Homeless Children and Youth Program, yet another from the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore the, for an ice sculpture project at Y High, a Bit of Grace Horsemanship Program at Prince Street Elementary. Historical Documentaries Preserving the Past for, preserving the past for Future gener Generations um, for our TAD program at North Salisbury. Calm Down Kits for Pinehurst Elementary. I really want to thank the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore for it, all of the funding that they provided um, for our, all of these wonderful programs. It really touches my heart that they support us the way that they do. We had five grants submitted in the month of November, totaling $556,580. Um, there were a couple that were actually funded in the same month that we um, submitted them. 
for the Poetry <coughs> Week, the Tribe After School Program, as well as our Year 2 Strive and Readers Grant. We have three grants still pending for approval um, through the Salisbury Bacomico Arts Council for the Pottery Studio Experience, as well as an Artist in Residency for Glen Avenue. Um, listed below there, it's noted for the breakdown of funding through state grants and non-state grants for the combined um, grant information. Year-to-date funds requested total $6,508,387.93 and amount funded is $5,084,675.24, which is the most that we have ever brought in since I've been in this position. Well, so I'm very proud you know, of that. for the public that's looking... Uh, and for new board members, that's money that we would not have that's helping our students in this county. And again, I know I've said it before, and I hope you don't get tired of hearing it. I don't. Thank you <laughs> for what you do for the students of Wicomica County. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes my report. Moving along, 4.1, approval of the open session minutes. Everyone's had the opportunity to look at that, the November 13th regular meeting. I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. I got a motion to second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Against, same. Thank you. Consent items, 5.1 to 5.6 for new board members. We vote on all of these at one time. <laughs> but I know, uh, as in the past, if you have a question on either of these items, please bring it up. I know John has a question on one. So at this time, anybody has any questions on any of these items, please bring them up. Uh my question has to do with the uh, chiller contract for uh, chiller replacement at Pemberton, and uh, uh, what what was the size of that chiller and the price per tonnage? It's coming down. Mark's coming down. And I know he already has the answer in his head. Um, <laughs> I would have to do research as to what the size of the chillers are at those locations. As far as the Pricing for the chiller and the pump. Chiller one is the amount of the 181. Chiller two is the amount of the 168. There's two chillers at at the school. I can do research Mark, and, and find out what the tonnage I think is. Actually, I mean, Lisa might have some, some so information. The new chillers. Um, the first one is 166.7 tons. Um, Net capacity is 157.5 tons at a supply of 400 gallons per minute. For right. both, for both of them. For both of them. Uh, now, when you purchase these, do you get the standard uh, three-year warranty uh, maintenance and, and parts uh, when it's bid out? For our local, for our contracts, they're a standard two two year, and that includes maintenance as well as warranty. Do they offer an additional two years on that for a low price? I know a lot of them will if you ask. I'm not going <clears> to, <throat> Mr. Seuss is not here. The maintenance department normally picks up an additional maintenance contract post construction project. So after the first initial two years, they usually pick up a service contract beyond that time frame. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other com comments or questions on any other consent items? Okay, I don't need a motion to accept the consent item. Move to accept the consent items. I got a motion. Is there a second? Second. I got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Again, saying thank you. Six point one. Upon the recommendation that the superintendent is there a motion to approve 
the first reading, draft A and draft B of the Wicomic County Public School calendar for 2019-2020. So moved. I got a motion. Second. And I got a second. Discussion. I've kind of looked at them. I couldn't see the difference between A and B. <laughs> Very <laughs> You are right on target, Mr. Brown. There isn't much difference um, with the parameters that we have where we start after Labor Day and we end by June 15th. If you look at them um, when you have a chance side by side, October 18th is your point of focus. In version A, October 18th is a professional day, meaning students would not come to school, but schools would be open for teachers and um, the central office and school offices would be open. That has teachers last day marked as June 11th. In version B, October 18th is still a non-school day for students, but it is also presented as a non-work day for teachers, and that changes on version B, or on draft B rather, these teachers last day to June 12th. That truly is the only variance between the two versions. We have very little flexibility, as you will recall from previous discussions on the calendar. Any other questions? I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against, say. So we will take this calendar and we will put it out for public comment now and bring back those comments for second read in January. Yep. And if they're like myself, they're, not, they're going to have to look real close <laughs> to find the difference. 6.2, budget transfers. <clears throat> One of the superintendent's recommendation is our motion to approve the budget transfers as presented by the controller for the month of December 2018. So moved. I got second. a motion second. and a second. Jesse, how are you? I'm good, sir. Uh, good afternoon, President Fitzgerald, Dr. Hanlon, board members. We have three students new to us this year with severe med medical needs that require one-on-one -on -one nurses, and we're expecting a fourth in the, in the next coming weeks. Uh, as you can guess, we did not anticipate these costs in the fiscal year 2019 budget and are consequently projecting a deficit in the student health services category budget. Uh, fortunately, we are projecting a budget surplus in the Del Mar tuition exchange budget line item as the enrollment mix came in better than we had forecasted. Uh, so we have some funds available to transfer to cover these shortages, and I stand ready for any questions that you might have. Now, this transfer, I guess, Bruce, is to you. Uh, do we have to go to county council for that? We do. That is correct. Okay. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Hearing none, I have a motion and I have a second. All those in favor for the budget transfer signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. We'll take this. We will send immediately the budget transfer request to Mr. Culver, and then we will follow up with um, a council vote in January. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. 6.3 personnel matters, and this is just for information only. Everybody's had the opportunity to go over those. Seven point one board members report. And Ann, I'm going to let you go first, as being a new member and the, the young lady on the, on the board. I am very pleased to be the pull, first... Pull, pull the mic to you closely. There. I'm very pleased to be the first woman ever elected to the Wicomico <laughs> County School Board. <laughs> and I sincerely want to thank <coughs> the voters of the 4th District for electing me to represent them on the Wicomico County School Board. I was pleased to hear the um, report about the uh, CTE at Parkside about their poinsettias. I've already purchased mine. I have them throughout my home. They are absolutely gorgeous, so I urge everyone who is hearing this to go over to Parkside and purchase your gorgeous poinsettias. Thank you. Mr. Brown. Okay. 
Good evening, everyone. Uh, first, I'd like to say I've had an opportunity to get in at least six schools already this year, uh, not as a uh, board member or as a past employee, but as a member of the Rotary Club of Salisbury. And I'm very pleased with what I'm seeing. I go every year. There's an international project that Rotary has of giving out dictionaries to all the third graders in the uh, school systems in Wacomico County. And I'm really, really pleased with what's going on and the mannerism of the, these uh, kids and, and the schools. Anyone will walk into those buildings and you can see and you can hear that learning is going on. Uh, things are well organized. The buildings look fantastic. Uh, the kids seem to be uh, learning and enjoying themselves. Uh, the thing that's kind of striking to me is that, and I've done this now for 20 years, uh, they still are very excited about getting a dictionary. And you have to remember that for some of these kids, this is the only and first book that they have of their very own. You know, many of the ones they get in school, they have to get back at the end of the year. But this one they get to take home. Um, and, and it's really interesting. There's some facts in the back of the book that just really grabs them and keeps their attention. And like the longest word in the English language has about a thousand letters. And I go in and say, you think the supercalifragilisticexpialidocious is the longest word, but no more. And they really enjoy that. But I've Got to, had an opportunity to go to North Salisbury, Delmar, Northwestern, Westside Intermediate. Tomorrow I'm going to uh, uh, Prince Street in the morning and Pemberton in the afternoon. Looking forward to all of those visits. As well as some of the others of us, we had an opportunity to go to the legislative uh, uh, dinner this year at West Salisbury and to see those second graders <laughs> perform, uh, like Mr. Fitzgerald <laughs> says, that's what it's all about. To see those little kids and you be able to get them to organize and to perform is really, uh, it warms your heart and you know that things are going really well and that we're having a school system that's really developing the minds and focusing the minds of uh, our individual students, our youngsters. Uh, and lastly, I'd like to again thank all the, those of you who have put in a kind word and uh, helped me get reelected to be here again to uh, work with you. And I'm sure that as uh, years pass, uh, we'll have challenges that we'll have to meet and we will do that successfully. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gosley. This is my first rodeo, so to speak. Well, I've been on the Republican State Central Committee. I just was elected to my sixth term, and we were very instrumental in getting the elected school board in Wycombe County. And it's a privilege to serve on the first elected school board with Ann and the rest of the fine gentlemen here. It's been a long uphill struggle, but we're here. But the one thing about the dinner meeting the other night that struck me. I never felt so sorry for that one person up there. I can't remember his name, the one that had the yeah, keyboard. keyboard yeah. <laughs> but God bless that shallow man. He picked it up and carried it. But see that boy working there with a with, with that computer trying to get it to go and it just would not go for him. Technology is wonderful when it works. <laughs> but on the uh, other side I was reading in the uh, Independent when it came out. We have one teacher, Y Middle teacher, Mr. Jeff Lynn, who donated a kidney to a perfect stranger that he saw. One had to sign up a TV sports event. And I believe we have an awards ceremony coming up. And I would like to recommend to you, Mr. President, that we have a special award, if there is such a thing, for somebody going above and beyond and giving life to a person that is completely unknown to that person at all. And it's very gratifying that people are still doing that today. And God bless this teacher and the recipient. Thank you. And we'll make something happen. <laughs> Mr. Palmer. Christmas parade. <laughs> it was great. I'm sure uh, almost everybody in here was at the Christmas parade. Uh, my, my wife was in it. She gave out candy the entire time. She walked the entire route. I r rode in a car, a classic car with Mr. Murray, and it was tough, but we got through it. So, <laughs> so it was good. Uh, I'd like to thank the voters in District 5 for voting for me. Uh, I enjoy what I do here. Look forward to the future. 
just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you. I, uh, I would like to start, too, by so many reports as we hear from all of our different high schools, which I think is outstanding and wonderful, and we try to get to all those things. I particularly enjoyed, I was there the other night for Y High and the dedication there to Butch Waller. That was fantastic. And um, also, today, it really touched me when we started with a pledge with one of our students in the pre-K. That is what it is all about. And I think we all witnessed that as she started, you know, and leading that pledge. And yes, she loved that mic, and that's great. That's great. <laughs> but what was really special is when she was leaving, she said goodbye to us all. And I thought that was really fantastic. I am just outstandingly, and I congratulate all of our schools that participated in our star ratings four and three it's just wonderful and i know it's a baseline and i know we go from that but it it's great and it definitely as our principal from pemberton said celebrations are always important to motivate and continue i also thought it was uh as usual i always thank for the grants that amount of money is just phenomenal and that is money we would not have to operate for our children in these schools and things. So that is tremendous. And also, um, I wanted to comment, I thought it was outstanding with the Special Education Citizens Advisory Committee, the annual report. And Mrs. Walston, to you and all of your group there, as well as all the groups, outstanding, because you know that's my background. And I, I really, I know what that involves. It's excellent. I also would like to thank the citizens of Wicomico County for their support for me at large and running again for four years and looking forward to working with everyone. And I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a happy and healthy New Year. Thank you, Mr. Barry. Mr. Malone. Thank you. Like my colleagues, I'm appreciative of being elected to the school board for the first time and uh, being elected as vice chairman by my colleagues up here. That's quite an honor. Thank you. Um, since our last meeting, I attended a few events uh, on behalf of the school board. I attended the uh, Salvation Army Kettle Kickoff. What a great operation that is. You'll see me out there somewhere ringing a bell for the, uh, for the Salvation Army. Do great work, especially this time of year. You think about that. Along with uh, Dr. Hanlon and Dr. Briggs, we were at the United Way Gala. Um, very nice event and uh, see a lot of folks there, another organization that does great works in our area. Like many of us, I went to the Christmas parade and I had the honor of walking with Dr. Hanlon and beside the car that uh, Mr. Murray and Mr. Palmer struggled to move through the parade while we were walking. It, it was rough, Gene. I know it was rough. You guys looked like you were sweating in there. But that's a great, that's a great time to uh, wave and see folks and pass out candy. That was a great, great event. And we won. First place for non-commercial float, right? Non-commercial entry. Entry, yeah. So we won it. We won a first place in that thing. So that was amazing. <laughs> thanks um, to the car. Thanks to the car. Right? <laughs> but then, la and lastly, last Friday I attended. I call it the an economic symposium or forum where many leaders spoke, including our own Dr. Hanlon, who I'd like to give kudos to. She presented a, a report on. Education is it an investment or an expense, and it was great data. And I told her afterwards I'd love to have that presentation. It really breaks it down that education um, is an investment in your community, and it shows with numbers. And being a banker, I'm a numbers guy, but it, it spells it out pretty clearly what happens when you invest in education, what it does for your community, and what it does for the surrounding areas, and what it does for the folks that are getting the education. It's not an expense; it's an investment, and we all say that all the time, and we all believe it, but this report or this paper, I call it a paper that Dr. Hanlon presented, really spelled it out. So kudos to you for presenting it because there were a lot of business leaders that saw that. And it's kind of the right time of the year as we're kind of inching into the budget season. But So that's my report. I want to wish everyone happy holidays, and thanks again for uh, allowing me to serve on the school board. Thank you, Gene. Well, as we said here today, History is being made. There will never be another first elected school board in this county. So all of us setting up here, we're making history. I never thought when I was in high school at Wahai that I would ever make history being on the school board, but we have. 
<laughs> it's an honor uh, and very humbling to me. And I want to thank all the citizens of Wicomica County that supported me. In doing that, I think they saw, and I mean every word of this, it's not about us setting up here. It's not, ladies and gentlemen. It's about that young lady over there, that young man sitting out there. It's the students of Wicomica County. And, you know, I want to give them the best that we can afford, realizing, you know, we have to go uh, stretch the bucket sometime to get that extra money. But it's about them, it's not about us. So as we leave here this afternoon, uh, we'll not be back again as a group till after the first of the year. So Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And uh, if you got a chance, help someone. Reach out and touch somebody's life over the holidays. Thank you. Meeting adjourned.